with uh, respect to women and child development, etc. Internationally, there is this huge discussion about uh, setting some goals, Millennium Development Goals. Uh, you've also spoken at the United Nations. When you, when you speak there, when you interact with these world leaders, how committed are they to fulfill these goals? Because very often we've seen many, many leaders have missed these targets. They've not invested enough in women and children and their health. And when you went there, when you interacted with them, what do you believe should be truly done in terms of commitment of these global leaders? So this is a complex situation. It's not as simplistic as we think. In different countries, in different cultures, these levels of disparities and the struggles are very different. Let's say you go to Africa. In Africa, women have more share of the work than men because men are drunk, okay? They have more share of the work. But a large number of men have managed to get guns in their hands. So what is an economic power? Because they have no share of that, the men, they've gone for military power, which is easy. Now you just have to have a gun. In many of these societies, it's become like this. Women are doing all the agricultural work, taking care of cattle, children, works, everything. Men are just carrying guns and walking around. Because he has a gun, he gets more than his fifty percent of share. So please understand this. This is how societies will adjust themselves. If you try to force something, the, the reverse that comes back will not be a good thing. So now from Africa, if you move to Arabia, you can't touch it because it's religious. You can't talk about the women. Nobody talks about it. You talk about it, you may be dead. So from there you come to Europe, it's a different situation where everybody can do what they want, but are women very happy? No, they are not. Because, because of all this excessive talk about equality, nobody wants to be together. Right now they're saying below thirty years of age, the number of people unmarried is over seventy percent, okay? Nobody wants to marry, you, I want you to understand, nobody wants to marry means no man is willing to commit himself to a woman. He wants her when he wants her, when he doesn't want her, he doesn't want her. There's no commitment. When this happens, as time goes by for the woman in her life, this is going to be become a major problem. When she's young, maybe it doesn't matter. As time goes by, it becomes a serious problem. Then you come to India, here because of, you know, widespread poverty is there. Let's not sit in Hyderabad or Mumbai and think we're doing great, all right? Not even one percent of this country's population can sit in an atmosphere like this. So we can't suddenly believe we are in some la-la land, we are not. There are harsh situations out there. For those very harsh situations, believe me, neither men nor women are having a great time, all right? For that kind of situation, I believe there is substantial parity between men and women in the villages. There is… there is a certain cohesiveness. They are not thinking, I am being exploited this, this. Unless a man becomes a drunkard or violent for some reason, this can happen always. We don't have to paint the entire society with that small percentage. But it's the governments which want to sell alcohol to everybody. They want to do oh, door delivery. You want your packet of Iraq in the evening, they will deliver it in a drone and your man gets drunk. <laughs> then things happen, he gets violent. So I'm saying it is not like a one-off thing. If we want a healthy society, we must create the ecosystem for a healthy society. People who believing for everything you can do a surgical intervention is a cruel way of handling a society. We need to create a e society with substantial economic well-being, education. Then if somebody is still ill-treating a woman, then you have to deal with him with law. For everything you bring one more law, one more law, one more law, then uh, your home will be like a court, everyday arguments will happen between two lawyers which will never come to a conclusion. <laughs> this is a complex situation. Global leaders want to look at that one single thing that will transform the entire world. That's what I was trying to say. These different societies need very close attention. They… you cannot pass a law and say… or you cannot say, this is it. What works in Africa must work in Arabia, it's not going to work. What works in Arabia should work in India, it's not going to work. We have to 
handle it at the local level. Global leaders can give a direction and intentions, but work has to be very local, very organic and very involved. See, what all this means is, can United Nations give us a solution? What this means is, we are looking for a solution without our own involvement in it. Without involvement, there is no life. Without involvement, there are no solutions. Without involvement, there is no emancipation of the human being. We have to get involved with all the little problems that we have around us, how we bring up our girls, how we bring up our boys. This is where it is, the freedom. It is not in just bringing one more law and one more law.